What's up YouTube and welcome to a Porsche 928 S4 project video. Today we're going to be working on the digital clock in my 1988 S4 and really attacking a common problem that uh, many users of the mid-generation 928s face. Uh, the very early models had analog round clocks. Uh, the mid-generation ones, which mine is a part of, have these digital clocks, and then the late models have square analog clocks. Um, all of them kind of have their pros and cons. This one has a very common issue, which is that the screen is bleeding. Um, you can kind of see that it's all blocked off and you can't read all the numbers clearly. And then the other issue we're going to attack today with this is the clock only reads in military time, as I, as I call it. 24-hour um, time, I guess would be another way to express that. That is actually how it was designed, and they didn't change it for the domestic market cars, which is kind of strange to me because most Americans can't think that logically, I guess, to figure out what that means. Uh, so luckily I can read it, but ultimately I would prefer it to display 12-hour time. I just think it makes it a lot easier for everyone to quickly uh, take a look at the clock and know the time. So if you can take a look at the clock currently, it's, you know, again, blocked by some of the screen bleed, but it is reading 15.05 or 3.05 p.m. Uh, so we're going to do a mod that I've read about online to hack the clock into reading 12-hour time, and we're also going to replace a screen using some parts I picked up online. So the first task with getting this out of the car is we need to remove this panel that surrounds uh, underneath the stereo. It goes around here, around the shifter, and all the way around the base here. So to get this off, it's kind of interesting in that there is no screws, clips, Allen bolts, anything like that holding it in. It is actually just held in by pressure. So what I understand is the key steps in getting this out is to remove the ashtray. Um, very simple process to do that. There's just two Phillips head screws on each corner, one over here, one over here. We'll pop that out. There's going to be some electrical connections behind that uh, to remove the light bulb that's in here and then the electrical connection that powers the lighter. So we'll pull that out. Um, my understanding is the next step is we take off the two knobs for the rear air conditioning unit, disconnect the electricals that hold that in together, and then we can start to pull out the whole, uh, you know, like I say, the whole panel that surrounds the console here. Um, I already have the radio out on this car because I have another project I'm working on with that. My understanding is you don't need to pull the radio, but I think it honestly will probably benefit us to get this out, having that out, give me a little bit more leverage. Uh, what I'm going to use today is just some plastic trim tools to start to pry around this console once we have the switches out, and then pull the whole housing out. Um, so I might be able to give you another update from within the car, but ultimately this is just step one to get it out of the car, and then all of our work with the clock itself are going to require some soldering and some bench work. So I'll do that separately um, from once I have it pulled out of the car. So I'm going to pause here and cut. Um, we may have an update again from once we're in the car and get some of these pieces moving, uh, but wanted to give an overview of at least how to get the first step of the process out and getting uh, the unit out of the car. All right, so just to give a quick in-progress update on the uninstalling, uh, I've got the housing off, but I just wanted to point out a couple things that I had to detach just to be ready to do that. Uh, these are all the wires that were hooked up to the um, cigarette lighter and the light bulb, so you can actually leave the light bulb itself attached to the wire. It won't hurt anything. Uh, there's two things you'll need to, two connections you'll need to unplug from the back of the ashtray and the cigarette lighter um, just to get that loose. That gets that out of the way. When you take off the knobs for the rear AC, um, when sh the the uh, knobs for the, the heading of the knob, sorry, can't get that out, <laughs> just lifts straight up. Uh, it's not a big deal, but the, you do need to use a flathead to loosen the um, inner housing, the inner ring that's inside of there. So once you do that, the inner components of that will come off with a washer. You just pull those out for both sides. Um, this is just press fit in the, the car as it was said. Um, I did think it was easier since I had the radio out to lift from the top and then start working my way back. Uh, but ultimately I have the whole housing all the way down to the bottom of the shifter is completely free. So I can just lift that up and out of the way. Um, so that really leaves us with the clock assembly. And uh, all you have really left to do is you have your two knobs here for the rear climate control. Um, those just kind of pull out of the way. 
So I've got those separated on the back. And then really all we're left with is the wiring for the clock. So we've got, uh, looks like three wires here to disconnect. And then we'll have the clock unit completely free of the car and can start all of our uh, work on the clock itself. So just wanted to provide a couple other tips on how to get this apart. Um, really wasn't able to shoot video while I was doing it, but it's not that difficult overall. So um, no clips or anything like that to deal with. You just gotta be patient, take your time so you don't damage anything and it'll pop out. So after the cut here, we'll get the clock the rest of the way out and continue our work on the clock itself. All right, so at this stage we have the clock housing out of the car. Um, you can get a little bit better look at the existing screen bleed we had going on with the, the original clock. Um, these were the three things you needed to unhook to get it out of the car. So there's two terminals here and then the bulb housing just lifts straight out. Uh, the first step we need to do is get the black plastic section separated from the housing. So to do that there is four um, retaining clips, two on this side and two on this side. Uh, looks like you're going to need to kind of squeeze together at the same time. I may need to get a screwdriver in there too. So I'm going to cut to actually do the disassembly, but those are the uh, first pieces you need to do to separate the two sections of the clock. So bear with me while I do that. All right, so we have the screen housing removed from the clock. Uh, I want to tell you to take your time and be gentle because I hand fisted it and broke one of the tabs. Um, hopefully three of the four will still hold it in place, but as you can see this one right here, 32 years old, snapped off uh, real quickly just with some slight pressure. So I uh, kind of screwed that up, but hopefully that's not that big a deal. But uh, the housing is now off of the clock, so we can start to look a little bit more at the internals. Now you can actually see the screen panel we're going to make the adjustment to. Um, I do want to make the call out that the buttons that you use to change the time just rest in that black housing. So as soon as you pull the housing off, these are just going to go flying. <laughs> so try to have something uh, to catch them. That's why I use this plate, um, just to have something that it would fall into as a dish um, as I removed it. So the next step we're going to do is go to the back of the clock and we're going to start removing some solder. So as you can see, there's two soldered sections here that hold these two pins in place. Um, I have a desoldering iron uh, we're going to use here just to, or sorry, a desoldering pump uh, that I'm going to use to um, loosen those up and then pump the solder out. Hopefully that won't be a big deal once this warms up. And uh, we'll go ahead and remove those two connections and then we can start with further stages of disassembly. So I'm going to cut again because I'm waiting for my iron to heat up and uh, we'll move forward there with the next step. Okay, so just another short update here. We use the desoldering pump and remove the solder from these two terminals here. Hopefully you can see that without a focus. Uh, you want to get this as clean as possible to do the next step, so I'm hoping that this is going to be sufficient. If not, I may have to go back with the pump a little bit more and clean up the edges a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, we need these terminals to slip off from the two posts that we've now exposed. So what we're going to do in this next step is, and this is again something to be very delicate with, so I'm hoping I'm not going to break any brittle plastic, uh, but you have a, let me show you this direction, I think it might be easier. Um, you have a hook here that slightly pulls back and you have a hook down here that slightly pulls back. So the goal is to um, detach both of those while pushing everything through the assembly and then that should clear those two posts we've now opened up. Um, I'm gonna have to cut for that again, apologies, but uh, it's gonna be probably pretty fiddly just to get that to pull up. Uh, but once we do that, then the clock should be out of the remainder of the housing. So bear with me while I do that and hopefully don't break anything. All right, so just an update with our next phase of the process. We have gotten the clock removed from the housing completely. Um, so just a couple call outs with that is you do wanna make sure you get it really good with the desoldering pump so that all the solder is off of these two tips which hold it to the plastic. Uh, but once that's off, you can get these very long pieces out and unclip it as we showed you in the last step. Uh, we're gonna get into kind of a dual phase step of the process here. So this is where we're going to also replace the LCD screen, um, but also we're gonna get into how to convert the clock to 12 hour mode. So I'll show you both of those two steps of the process as we get into it. Uh, the next step of the clock is we gotta do a little bit more disassembly. We've gotta remove this white plastic housing away from the circuit board. So to do that, uh, we need to unscrew uh, these two 
flatheads. So this one and this one here. Um, just one call out for my instructions is do not turn the flathead that is right on here. Apparently that will really mess things up. So ignore that one, but these are the two that we're going to remove next um, to get those two pieces apart. So bear with me while I cut again, and then we'll talk some more about some of the more detailed steps that are gonna come next in the phase of the process. All right, well, we are really getting down to the guts of the unit now. So I have pulled away the screen section away from the circuit board. Um, again, we're gonna be doing the update to that here shortly, putting in the new screen. Uh, but the first step I wanna do is the modification that will allow the clock to display in 12 hour mode, not 24 hour mode. So this is the actual guts, the circuit board of the unit. Um, it's made by VDO who makes a lot of electronics and German cars. And this is really fascinating now that I have a better understanding of how the clock itself works. Um, ultimately, you have these two pads. One of them is located directly under the V, and one of them is located directly under the D in the VDO logo. And what's really interesting, I don't know if the, the camera is going to pick up on this. Probably not, because it's really tiny on the board. But ultimately, there is labeling on the board for this pad uh, that it is a 24-hour mode and there's a labeling on this pad that it's a 12 hour mode. So what's very interesting is for the two contacts on here, they are currently connected um, to display in 24 hour mode, and then the ones on the 12 hour are not connected, which is what is disabling it from being able to do display the way I want it to. So again, I'm following the instructions I've received um, from a 928 forum member who put it together years and years ago. But now that I'm actually doing this, I have a better understanding of what's going on here. So we kind of have two steps here. One of these is going to be uh, irreversible, <laughs> pretty irreversible at least. And so I want to do the step that is reversible first, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of solder between these two posts to connect them. And then I need to take something sharp and cut the line in between these two posts uh, that is causing it to display in 24 hour mode. So once I, like I said, that's kind of the point of no return. Um, you are not gonna be able to repair that easily once that cut is made, but ultimately that is how you do this. So bear with me while I first add some solder to this pad, connect these two, and hopefully that goes smoothly. And then I'll reevaluate, um, do I really want to do this and make that cut between these two lines because you won't be able to go back. Um, so that's the first step, or really the only step needed in getting the clock to display in 12 hour mode. Once that is all complete, um, I'm going to move on to the screen itself and then we'll replace our new LCD screen repair. So bear with me while I cut again, waiting for my soldering iron to warm up here and then we'll dive into um, the adjustments to the circuit board itself. All right, so just a quick update with the progress on the soldering and the cutting up the trace. Uh, we have added solder to these two posts under the D, as I said, under the VDO logo. And if you look here, we have cut the trace in between the uh, two posts under the V logo for the 24 hour mode. Um, I used a push pin for that. I tried with a different tool first and it didn't work so well, but the push pin actually was pretty effective in getting that trace cut and not making a big mess. So uh, hopefully that works or maybe something better <laughs> to use, but that's what I use. So um, if all went well with this, this is everything you need to do to the board itself to enable the 12 hour mod. Um, so now the clock should display, not in military time, but in 12 hour mode. Um, so we're gonna turn our attention to the screen next and replacing the screen. So I need a little bit more prep time to be able to give you an update on that. Uh, but ultimately we're gonna start working on that piece here and replacing our cloudy screen. So give me a moment here and we'll work on that stuff. All right, so things are coming apart faster than I anticipated. So I figured I better come in with an update before uh, I get too far along. So let me show you what comes in the actual new kit for the screen first. Uh, you get this baggie here that has the new screen itself. Um, I just started peeling the corner of this protective film off of it. We're gonna take that off of the front side of the screen here in just a moment. And then it comes with two new contact strips that you're gonna have to put on the um, edges of the screen, top and bottom. So I'll show you where those go in a second. Uh, I started to peel apart the old screen and things started kind of falling apart. So I want to show you kind of all the pieces we have here uh, before I get too far along. So we have the old screen here um, and then it has this like opaque layer that lays below it. We're going to reuse that. Um, the contacts, uh, 
edges of contact strips came off the screen when I pulled it apart. So they kind of just stack on the ends here. These are the old ones. We're not going to reuse those. We'll use the new ones. So we're going to set aside those two old contact strips as well as the old screen. We shouldn't need any of those parts any longer. And then ultimately that leaves us with uh, the plastic housing and that opaque strip that are going to lay below the screen. So we'll work on those here in just a second. Um, before I get too much farther along though, I am going to peel the protective coating off the new screen. And then the other thing I should call out that comes in the new kit is a alcohol swab, probably just to wipe it clean once before you finish the installation, but it does say to remove this at this stage. So we've got the uh, protective coating off of that. This is just the swab that comes in the kit as well, but that is all the pieces that come in the kit. So. I'm going to do a little bit more uh, diagnosis with my instructions before I get too much further because we're getting a bunch of loose little pieces here and uh, I'll give you an update once I'm ready to proceed. Alright, so the reassembly piece is pretty fiddly and unfortunately I was not able to catch all of it on camera but I'll kind of point out what I did. Um, I chose to put this piece in place with the screen facing down. Um, again, you peel off the protective coating of the screen before you put it in, so that's an important step. Um, so you're going to put your two contact pads um, facing on either end of the screen. Make sure you've got that opaque layer underneath there, and then the plastic housing just slips into place. Um, you'll know if you have it right because it fits very nicely once it's in place. Make sure you line up these plastic holes on the corners, top left and bottom right. Um, and then the last step is reattaching the circuit board uh, to the screen. So you're going to want to do that with this facing down. Um, and then this is going to mate with it um, directly on top. I may not be able to do this on camera. But again, you'll know when you have it lined up because there's these two... Um, see, I might not have it lined up now. <laughs> there's these two edges to the clock dials that have to go in these two holes. So again, you can only put it one way to know that it's right. Uh, but once those are all in place, this is sitting flush. I'm probably gonna re reattach it a little better here off camera. Um, then you can go ahead and put your two screws back in the back of the board to hold everything together. So once you get to that stage, then you're really um, heading in the right direction to get everything back together uh, because all of the little tiny bits have then been reassembled. So. I'm going to cut again, make sure that the facing is fitting flush with my new screen, um, reattach the screws, and then we'll get back into starting to put the assembly back on. So bear with me again while I cut. All right, well, it would be easy to say uh, reinstallation is the reverse of disassembly, but I thought I'd show you just a couple call outs as you put things back together. Um, so as you can see, we've got our um, screen housing reattached to the circuit board, and then now we are reinstalling everything into the housing to go back in the car. Um, when you rest the circuit board back into this main housing, please make sure that you um, snap it under the two clips and be very delicate with those. Mine did not break, thankfully, but I could see how they easily could. Um, the board needs to seat underneath those two clips, this one and this one here. And then on the back, you're going to reattach with um, the screw this terminal that I took off. And then we need to re-solder the two posts. So the positive and the negative on here need to be re-soldered. Um, probably the best thing to do would be to test this out before you go and put all this back in together, but I'm kind of in a hurry with the lack of daylight uh, running out. So I think I'm just gonna put it all back together and hope for the best here before it gets dark. So um, as I said before, I've just re-screwed this terminal back on and then I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm back up. We're gonna solder these two posts and then this should be ready to go back um, with the the main housing screen um, to start moving it back into the car. So bear with me again while I cut. I'm gonna get that soldering bolted up uh, or buttoned up and then we'll move forward with the next step. All right, well we are cruising toward the finish line with all of the out of car activities to do. So we again have the clock back in the main housing for the car. On the back I have completed the soldering for the two posts here. So that is now uh, back and hopefully making a good connection. We are ready to put the face back on the clock. So one thing I will call out with this is you got to be real careful with the two little buttons uh, that go back in the face. Ask me how I know. Probably about 10 minutes of swearing and uh, looking for one of these things that you just missed out on. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we're going to put these back into the facing. Um, the fatter side of the button actually goes... Um, 
inside the car. So you're going to have the narrow side facing out. So you're just going to drop those into the um, back of the housing. It's very tiny. And as you can see, I'm dropping them again. Uh, so once we get those in there, sorry, hard to display that. Uh, should kind of look like that. And then you can kind of double check them just by holding them in place flipping it over and you can see those are the sides you would hit with your pen to adjust the clock. So um, once again, this has to be done facing down whenever you reassemble it or else those two things are going to go flying. Again, don't ask me how I know. Um, you may also want to use your alcohol swab one last time on the clock, uh, probably all three areas. So I would use it on the face of your new screen, on the back of the housing screen, and then on the front of it uh, that's going to be facing out. So we're going to reattach all of this. Um, keep in mind, this can only go one direction, so it's just easy to make sure you've got it right because this side has a smaller prong than the bottom. Uh, this one on the bottom down here is unfortunately the one that I snapped off disassembling it, so hopefully that's not going to be too critical. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start to line this up uh, to reattach on here. I may not be able to do this on camera, just depending on how easy this is to get matched up. Okay, feel good about that side. And then we're just gonna push the bottom in. There we go, nice little snap it made. Snapped on that end. These are pretty tight, so again, while this one is unfortunately broken off now, I don't think that's gonna be a problem, especially once you get it in the car. It seems pretty solid as it is. So that looks pretty good. Um, everything is a lot clearer, obviously, with the new screen. Don't have all that bleeding on the screen like you saw before. We're going to go ahead and start to install this back in the car and um, hopefully everything will work out well. Uh, but so far I'm pretty pleased with the result here and how everything went. So stay tuned for the uh, reassembly into the car and we'll see how it looks. All right, and we have done our test fitting and it is a success. Uh, the clock is working. I verified that it only displays in 12 hour time now, which is awesome. So it is currently 1.44 p.m. and it is displaying 1.44, not 13.44. Um, and you can ro rotate through all the hours and it just goes from 1 through 12 and then loops back around because obviously there's no a.m. p.m. Uh, indicator on the clock. But uh, really excited so far this has worked. I'm going to button up the install and I'll probably show you one more view before I close out the video of everything put back together. Um, I don't think I need to document all that because really I've shown you how to take it apart so it's just the reverse of that obviously. But uh, really excited that this is working. Um, kind of a fun install to do, very tedious but worth it so far. So I have one more update for you once we get the dash back together and uh, we'll go from there. Alright so we have reached the final stage of the install. Everything went really well. And I'm very happy with the results. Clock is looking great. Uh, the bulb is also working for night mode to see uh, it lit up. So it's working nicely as well. Hopefully you got a lot out of this video. And please let me know if you have any questions on the install. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you soon. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.